Hey, let's practice yoga. Today we're going to go through several standing poses. And standing poses are great because they invigorate the whole being. They refresh your mind and body. They remove aches, pains and tension. Your digestion is stimulated. Your kidneys regulated and your circulation and breathing improve. Through regular practice you can build on the strength and mobility in your back, hips, knees, neck and shoulders. Standing postures teach you the principles of correct alignment and movement and awareness of the way you stand, sit, walk and run is developed. So let's get started. Into Dasana, mountain posture. Feet together, you might like to pick the toes up, stretch through the toes and place them back into the mat. You might like to pick the heels of the feet up, stretch into the heels and then place them back into the mat or the ground beneath you. And then get this continuum of lift and elevation taking place. So you're already thinking of rising up from the soles of your feet, you're lifting around the ankles, you elevate through the lower legs, the shins, the calf muscles, you rise up through the knees, backs of knees, and you reach higher with the thighs, the quadriceps, the biggest muscle group of the body in the legs here. And think about the upper back legs, raise up through the hamstrings and lift at the buttock cheeks. Now as you lift the cheeks of the buttock, the buttocks, draw them together and as you do that you'll feel this natural tilt of the pelvis taking place and that is the pelvic girdle aligning itself correctly. The pelvic girdle, the tummy, the hips, the waist, this area here is the linchpin between the upper realms of your body and the lower realms. So very important to get this part aligned. And then you continue to feel this rising up, this raising of the torso. A breath in through the nostrils. And as you breathe out, take the shoulder blades towards each other, shoulders back, you'll feel this opening across the front of the chest and let your arms hang naturally by the size of your body. Your fingers, just let them drop limp and loose down towards the floor. Get your chin parallel with the earth and then close the eyes. Now you may feel the transference of weight between your feet now to in and froing. Uh, you want to try and centralize this weight. So imagine and picture a metal pole running directly through the center of you and wrap yourself round this pole. Draw in close toward it. Unclench your teeth. And remember, most importantly, every breath you take in you will rise up, you will reach up, you will elevate. And every breath you let go of, you will surrender, you will relax and you will release. Good. Let's open the eyes. Breathe in. Bring the hands to rest at the palms, uh, the palms to rest at the heart, at the sternum, the breastbone. And then when you exhale, you're going to jump step or walk the feet three and a half feet apart. This helps just activate and engage all of the body. Let's stretch through the arms to the fingertips. We've got the star position now. The five points of the body, uh, the tips of the toes, the fingertips and the crown of the head. And just breathe in through a couple of cycles here. Inhaling and exhaling. You can really feel how the energy is traveling freely around your body. 
Let's sort of breathe in and without looking down at the feet, we're going to pick the toes up and we could, we're going to turn the feet to the left. Our left foot turns out 90 degrees and our right foot turns in about 45 degrees. We keep the trunk of the body like a column, upward lifting. We pull up internally, pubis to navel, navel to sternum. And then a breath in to lift our hips. And then as we exhale, let's reach to the left. We're moving into Trikonasana Triangle Pose. We've practiced this in earlier days. But it's good to keep reconnecting with these positions so that we're forever adapting, adjusting and improving. You can have a wall behind you in this position so that you really can experience true alignment, uh, aware of keeping your shoulders stacked one upon the other and the stacked shoulders aligned with the hips. Avoid dropping your right shoulder or arm or chest forward just in, uh, in the need to get your left hand low. So if your left hand is touching the toes, but you've slouched and dropped forward, you're, you're incorrect, you need to come back up, get your alignment, and then in time, as your body increases its flexibility, you'll be able to move further into the position. Keep the legs lively, acted, activated and lifting as you come back to a central position. And without looking down, we'll turn in the opposite direction, right toes turning out 90 degrees, left foot turning in 45, rising up through the torso, creating space with the inhalation, and then beginning the reach, the stretch, and then the lowering to the right, left shoulder aligned with the right shoulder, Right hand coming down to rest on the thigh, the shin, the ankle or the floor. Avoid resting onto the knee. Um, we don't need any extra pressure on the knee joint. Unclench your teeth. Ensure that the breath continues to flow. Raise those knees. Pull the tummy in and return upright to the star position, toes to 12 o'clock. If you can keep your arms raised, then this will increase upper body strength. But if you need to take a breather, then lower the hands and join back in as soon as you're ready. We're going to move into a nice extended side, side angle now. Uh, Pashvakonasana, so let's turn those feet. It might be as well at this point that we, we could widen the feet, widen the legs, if we feel that our stretch is increasing. Remember, it's your journey. Your breath is your guide, so remain tuned into that. Deep breath in through the nostrils. The air is warmed, cleaned and moistened as it enters uh, your nostrils. And then exhale, bend the left knee. You want the left knee to be supported over the heel of the left foot. So if that means that you need to draw that right foot uh, further away, then do so if you feel that you have got more depth to the posture. And be aware that because you've just bent that left knee, have you, have you lent to the left? Uh, let's take it back and get the trunk of the body like a column once again, so it's nice and tall and in alignment with the walls around you, if indeed you are within four walls. Let's keep the breath flowing and the teeth unclenched and the skin on the face soft. And then we're going to bend that left elbow and rest the left 
forearm onto the left upper thigh and let the right hand rest onto the right leg. Let's adjust and adapt into the posture, find a nice sense of alignment and then we'll breathe in and we'll raise the left arm up, the fingertips coming up, the left arm coming over and across sorry we're on the right arm we'll lift the right arm up we'll stretch up through the right arm to the right fingertips and ensure that the the upper right arm is just over the right ear and breathe and really feel the stretch that is taking place from the outer edge of the right foot all the way to the right fingertips if you feel that you can go further, then release down to bring the hand uh, to the floor. Only if you feel that you can achieve this. If not, you keep your right for your left forearm on your on your left thigh. Breathe. And then with the strength of the torso, the tummy pulling in to support the spine, you return. To the upright position. Okay, just find your foundation, a nice strong foundation once again, and then we'll move to the opposite direction. Keeping in mind the trunk of the body, nice and upright, like a column. The crown of the head rising up to the ceiling. A nice deep inhalation. Pull up internally, pubis to navel. And then on an exhalation, bend the right knee. So once again, the right knee is supported. It's over the heel of the right foot. If the knee is going over the toes, then you need to adapt your posture. Avoid any extra pressure on that knee joint. We'll bend the right elbow, rest the right forearm, and let the left hand rest on the outer edge of the left leg. Take this time to be aware of you've got a nice sense of centralness in the upper body. So your shoulders are aligned with each other. They're in line with your hips. If you move slowly, you'll be able to observe your alignment. Move too fast, you'll miss all those little, little parts that add up to great poise and posture. We'll then take the left arm up, reach up, stretch up, and then bring it over and across the left ear. We're making a full diagonal line from the outer edge of our left foot to our left fingertips. Our teeth are unclenched, our breath is flowing, the skin on our face is soft. We should be able to pick our toes up and give them a little wiggle as well, rather than tensing and gripping them into the mat. Let them relax. If you feel you can go further, bring the right hand to the floor. You could turn and look to the palm of the left hand. Breathe. And then keeping all strength and power in the abdominals to an inhalation to help you return upright once again. Let's lower the hands to rest on the outer edge of the legs. Take a breath in and a breath out. And then with heel and toe, jump step all the feet together, coming back into Tadasana. So now we're going to do a uh, Patangastasana, which is a standing posture taking one foot in one hand. You can have a belt or strap to help you here. Okay, great working tool. You can also make use of a wall if you need to, because you can uh, rest to the wall as you pick the foot into the hand and go through the position, okay? But we'll be moving a lot slower. 
So let's, from our mountain posture, we've got our alignment secure, we've got our poise. We're gonna take the weight into the left foot. Nice, strong standing leg, so that you've got this, this lift and elevation through the whole of the leg. It's rock solid. We're gonna peel the right heel off of the mat, and we're gonna draw the right knee in towards our chest without looking down and without moving forward in a sense of rather than bending forward to collect the knee, you're gonna keep nice and solid and bring the knee in towards the chest. Okay? And then from here, you will reach to get the foot in one hand or of course putting the strap around your foot and holding on to that. Breathe in, rise up and create space. Exhale, gently begin to stretch the leg forwards. Unclench your teeth, keep your chin level with the floor. Relax in your hip as you begin to swing that right hip out in its socket. Rise up through the torso. Check that the trunk of the body is still straight and then release and come back to Tadarasana. Breathe it in and breathe it out. Let's go to the other side. So we now transfer the weight into the right foot and we place that foot nice and strong and we rise up through the right leg. Lift the knee, lift the thigh muscle, lift the flesh on the buttocks Everything's creating that space and that upward pull. Without looking down, breathe in and draw the left knee in towards the torso. And then bring your left hand to connect with the sole of your left foot. Or put your belt around the base of the foot. Have your right hand on your right hip. Align the torso, get it nice and straight like a column, your head and shoulders directly over your hips. And then as you begin to exhale, you start to straighten that leg. And no judgment if it doesn't straighten immediately. You will release the right hand out in line with the shoulder, relax in the left hip and swing the left leg out and breathe. and then gently coming out of the position with the strength and grace that you went into it. Remember, do use a wall to practice. Do use your belt or strap because with the belt or strap, you can work here, even if the leg is low here and it swings out to the side, and you can keep the trunk of the body straight. Working at this level, lower levels, are much more important and beneficial than the ego trying to get the leg right up and crashing out of the position and being all misaligned. So take your time and work the posture at the lowest levels. And then you'll notice that as you get more flexible, as the hips mobilize and muscles and uh, tendons and ligaments stretch, then you'll be able to achieve uh, a fuller position. So let's now go into Vruksasana, tree posture which is a great position for giving us balance and coordination. Again, you can have a wall beside you to have one hand resting on it just to allow you in the early days to find your balance. Let's take the weight onto the left foot and then let's bring our right foot either at the ankle, at the knee or right up at the top, uh, top most of the inner thigh. Choose one of the positions that suit you rather than 
a position that your ego is egging you on for. So if you feel you don't have the balance and coordination at the moment, then keep the foot low. Use your right hand on your right inner thigh to gently bring that right knee out in line with the hip. It's a gentle ask, a little nudge in the right direction. Let's breathe in, and raise the hands to shoulder level and let the breath flow and observe your position with your head centrally over your shoulders and your head and shoulders centered over your hips. Rotate the arms from the shoulder girdle, extend the fingers down towards the mat and raise the hands up. Bring in the palms of the hands together and down to rest just above the crown of the head. Keep your elbows in line with the ears and rise up to make the tallest tree that you can be. Pull up internally, breathe and then gently bring the hands past the third eye to the heart and then release, allowing the weight of the body to now disperse equally into the two feet. Transfer that weight now into the right foot. Release the left heel off of the mat and take your left foot into your chosen position. Nice right down at the root if you are still finding your balance. If you're progressing and can now bring the foot in line with the knee. Or if you are venturing further into great balance and coordination, using your left hand to gently manipulate that left knee out in line with the left hip, keeping the torso, the trunk of the body nice and straight. Let's breathe in and raise the hands to shoulder level, taking them up slowly so that we can consciously control them. We can observe every minor, minuscule movement that we are making. Breathe in and from the shoulder girdle, rotate the arms so the palms of the hands face the ceiling. And then when you breathe out, you extend those fingertips down towards the floor. And then keeping the shoulders nice and relaxed, when you next breathe in, you raise the arms upwards bringing the palms of the hands to meet over the crown of the head, bending the elbows and keeping them aligned with the ears. As you make yourself nice and tall, forever rising up, elevating, and yet still deeply firmly rooted like a tree into the ground beneath you. and bring the hands past the third eye to the chest, the heart and release. Tadasana once again. Find your alignment, find your poise and breathe. And then let's bring ourselves down onto the mat, onto your buttocks, extend your legs away from you uh, to still have bent knees, feet hip width apart. Let's walk our hands down the outside of our legs as we tilt our pelvis, drop our chin into our chest, round the shoulders and connect each vertebra of our spinal cord with the mat.
Once you have made that connection of your spine with the mat, get the weight onto the heels of your feet, allow them to stretch and extend along the mat, and then the toes drop outward, and the arms roll outwards. The knuckles rest into the mat, the fingers curl naturally. Gently draw your chin down towards your chest so that you are resting, central on the back of your head. Close your eyes and tune in. This is Savasana. It may look a very easy pose. However, our aim now is to still the mind with all the rush of thoughts that were in and were out and race around. It is your goal to set them still, to release them, let go of them and find space in the mind. One of the best ways to do this is to follow the breath. So watch as you breathe in and watch closer as you breathe out. When you breathe in, feel your lungs to their very top and as you breathe out, let go consciously deeply and fully. Feel the heavy weight of your body pressing into the mat. Surrender yourself. Allow yourself to be supported. Feel safe being supported by the earth beneath you. Breathing Breathe out and enjoy this present moment of peace. And then Wiggle your toes and brush your thumbs across your fingertips. Lick your lips and swallow. Listen outside of the room for any noises. Sharpen your sense of hearing. And then open the eyes. Breathe in, take arms up and over the head. Have a full and complete stretch through the body. And then sigh the breath out, bring the hands back down, breathe in, bend the knees in towards the chest, exhale, roll yourself up into a cross-legged seated position, rise up through the trunk of the body, be aware of how you feel internally and externally, strengthened, lifted, refreshed, give thanks to yourself for your practice for your patience, your perseverance. All benefits are coming to you. Enjoy the rest of your day, be grateful, and always remember that yoga is good for you.